My Gaming Edge. Hey, what's up guys? It's CB with My Gaming Edge. Today I'm going to be doing a gravel pit video since I don't think anyone has covered Gravel Pit yet, and although we don't scrim it a lot and play it a lot, uh, when it comes down to it, it's very important that you have your teamwork and your chemistry and your strategies down. So what I wanted to go over specifically is point C and how to defend it. Now a lot of teams have really changed up the way they hold C, whereas traditionally you know, you'd have most of your team on top of the tower your medic trying to dodge snipers, trying to dodge spam coming in, and teams have realized that that's really not the most optimal way to hold it with the way the game has evolved. So I wanted to go over the way my team held uh, for our matches this season, and we changed it up and it really did pay off in certain situations. So what I plan on doing is going over a few clips to illustrate what I'm talking about and really show you how when you play it up close to the entrances you can really lock out the entire opposing team. Alright guys so the first thing I wanted to show you before we get into the clips is this screenshot and you notice that uh, in classic bite style I went ahead and did the uh, MS Paint arrows. I'm not quite as skilled as him when it comes to MS Paint but uh, it'll do for this explanation and, and what we need it for. Um, so here we're looking at the way my team defends C. Now it's important to note that it's going to take a time to set this up. So if you're just holding C for the first time and a team's coming in and you don't have time to do this, then it probably won't work in your advantage. But if you hold off a team for their first uber push and you have time to set this up, this is really really a good defense. Uh, we've tested it out a bunch and I'm just going to go over where each player should stand if you do choose to run this exact defense. Now if you look at the front here, uh, and the, by the front I mean the front of A, you see uh, Reptile and myself. And we like to hold the front here because it completely locks out anything from coming through that door. So as I was stating earlier, traditionally you have a sniper peeking that front door looking for the medic or demo spamming in pills and with this defense they can't do that they can't even get up close to the door and then if you look behind me we have uh, my other soldier ducky who's watching the the left entrance behind me and then if you look to the left of reptile we have dummy who's watching not only the main door but the door behind him so that locks out those three entrances now if you can see in the top left of the screenshot we also have a sentry gun um, and our engineer is not on it right now I think he went to get ammo or he's building a dispenser on point. The reason he's building uh, his dispenser up on point is because we have a heavy up there. It's also hard to see the heavy. He's actually inside the dispenser right now, I believe. But if the opposing team actually ends up getting in to the point, they're going to have a real tough time making it up there because we have the heavy with the dispenser. Now, that's what the pink arrows are for here. Pink arrows are where the heavy watches, both sides of the B tunnels, and also the other side where Ducky and the sentry gun are watching. So that pretty much locks everything out. I mean, even if a team decides to push underneath, they're going to have a really hard time getting in with the sentry gun, and we can rotate over easily. Now, it's important to note, again, for this defense, that not only does it take a while to set up, but we aren't running any scouts. So if your team is really scout heavy, you like to run scouts to distract, then that's obviously something you can adjust. We just feel for the way we run things that this is most effective. So if you just want to take one last look, make sure you understand where each player is holding, and we're going to get into the first clip. Alright, so here we are in our ESCA match versus Flame Idiot. And right now you're looking at my point of view from the screenshot. So it's the exact same screenshot, you're just watching it from my point of view. Uh, both teams are six strong. I have Uber, Sean Bud doesn't yet. So it's important to note that what we like to do here is push out to the combo to make them uber 
or if they don't have it and they're really pushed up, we try to get their medic as long as I have Uber. So we're going to go ahead and unpause it at 432 on the game clock. And again, you can see that uh, Ducky's watching the tunnel behind us and he calls that there's a scout there. So him and Reptile go over and take care of the scout. Now that bought us a little extra time because we, we're not sure if they're right at Uber yet, which you can see they're not, but anytime you lose a person, it's really hard to push 5v6 in Gravel Pit. So as you can see, I'm just trying to stay away from the doorways, and if I get the call to Uber in, then that's what we do. But I can't see, I don't have eyes on it, so it's Reptile's decision. If he sees you know more than one person there, he calls for it, and we push on to him. Now, Ducky calls right now if we pause it at 420, or excuse me, 353 on the game clock. Ducky calls right now that he sees the combo moving up that right tunnel. So, this means that Reptile and I need to move our focus over there. And at the same time, Ducky needs to do his best to get out of the fight because I just want to Uber one person. I just want to keep it on Reptile because they have to go for that sentry gun, meaning the demo is going to be focused on the sentry gun. So, Reptile can most likely pick whoever else is walking through this doorway. So what you're going to see when we unpause it is they're going to come through this doorway and we're both going to Uber. Now Ducky's going to do a nice job of getting out of the fight like I said while they're focusing the sentry gun and Reptile is going to be able to pick one of the soldiers who the medic isn't focused on. So what we're going to go ahead and do is unpause it at about 50% speed right now. And we can see we get the call. Ducky knows that they're coming right now. And so Reptile just gets ready to change his focus over. Both Ubers are popped. Now keep an eye on Reptile and what he does here. They're focusing the sentry gun. And he's able to actually pick a soldier because the medic had to keep it on the demo to get that sentry gun. So let's go ahead and pause it again at 341 on the game clock as you can see I'm flashing dummy towards the end of the uber and the sentry gun is just getting taken down so after all that fighting the sentry is just getting taken down and they're already down two players so that was a big successful hold and you can see if we uh, go ahead and turn it back to a hundred percent speed and unpause it now that the team is already in bad position the medic goes down right there and we're, you know, we didn't lose anybody in the fight. So really good exchange, and that's one example of no matter how the teams decide to push, that you can really lock them out. All right, so here we have another clip from the same match versus Flame Idiot, and a similar situation. Both teams are six strong, only this time their team does have Uber right away. Now, as I was explaining earlier, if we see that their combo is pushed up in this front hallway or in the side hallway, we elect to push on them and make them pop uber because even if they do manage to get into the point they have a sentry gun they have a heavy they have a demo all to deal with and most likely our medic and our soldier are going to be able to make it out as well so right now we are paused at 8:33 on the clock let's go ahead and resume and you can see that reptile is going to give me the call that there's a lot middle so as soon as I get that call and I see he's in, I Uber on him and look what happens. Let's pause it at 46 on the game clock. Not only did they pop Uber, but they had to flash it between not one but two people. So right here, this is a completely wasted Uber. Even if they are able to get in, they're not going to be able to do much because the Uber is going to be you know, over by the time they get through the door. Um, so let's go ahead and resume at uh, 21 on the clock. And you can see we're just kiting the Uber making sure that we get out safely and right there is we bought ourselves basically another minute's time because they have to build uber now so if you can get your team out there and you're able to make them pop uber and use it and waste it that's going to play huge to your advantage so that's just another way if they decide to push front that you can really use this defense as sort of an offensive tactic all right so this clip is against complexity who we played in our other ESCA match and I wanted to demonstrate how this strategy of playing really aggressive when you're defending can sometimes hurt you. In this case, uh, this clip really illustrates that pretty well. Um, as I've been explaining, we really like to attack the opposing team if we know that they don't have Uber to try to, you know, kill their medic before he gets it. Uh, and in this case, Blackie was running Crits Krieg, which we didn't know, but it didn't matter because I had about 20% advantage 
even with the Crits Creek. Now, we thought he was running normal Uber, so that equates to about 35%, but whatever the case may be, um, we're going to look at how this strategy can sometimes backfire on you. So, right now, we are paused with 20, uh, 51 on the clock. Let's go ahead and resume. Now, you're going to see Reptile move in here and take a lot of damage, uh, and I end up hopping Uber on him. So, it's good because he's able to get the soldier, and we do end up spotting the medic, but he can't get to him in time. So as you can see, Blackie just about gets Chris Krieg. He's at 96%, uh, and Reptile is able to get Platinum, so it might buy us a little time. They're down three, but it's not going to save us because we weren't able to kill the medic, and that's so big, and uh, you know now they're just going to be able to push back in. So you know sometimes this, this strategy can come back to bite you, but... Uh, you know, it, it's really dependent on whether or not you get that call to Uber, and in that case, it was probably my mistake. I Ubered a little bit too early. Um, I saw Reptile taking damage, and he didn't give me the call whether or not to Uber, so, you know, uh, sometimes it happens. All right, here is another clip from the same match, and unlike the last clip, this actually was a success. So, we understand, again, we have Uber advantage, and we want to go in and get that medic, and we see him playing sort of close up, so... We see the opportunity, we seize on it, and uh, it turns out being success. This time, though, we're going to watch from Reptile's point of view and see what he's able to do and how he's able to pick the medic and the soldier with our Uber. So right now we're paused at 9.07. Let's go ahead and unpause. Right now we're just building Uber. I know I'm about 30% ahead here. And as soon as we get it, we're going to move because we hear the call. Reptile lets me know they're pretty close, and they already dropped one. So here we go. We're moving in. Reptile takes a lot of spam. Their whole team's right here, as you can see, and he gets some good damage on Blackie. Right now, if you pause it at 46 on the clock, he tells me to back out. Now, it's really important that your pocket lets you know when to get out, um, and especially on Gravel Bit, because if you can stay alive when their medic's down and, and get, keep that Uber advantage, it's huge. So right now, he tells me to back out. He says he's going to jump for the medic. So let's go ahead and unpause it at 46. I start getting out. He sees the medic's running around. He jumps max him with a rocket and he goes down so huge right there as you can see our whole team is able to stay up um, and we're able to keep you know keep our uber advantage and and this clip really shows why I wanted to talk about this and why I wanted to make this video if you can get your team on the same page and do something along these lines then you can turn a defense into an offense and be the aggressors when uh, the other team is really going to get caught off guard a lot and not know how to handle it. Alright, so that's pretty much all I have today regarding defending C. Now, if you guys are interested in seeing further videos regarding attacking or defending point B, or possibly attacking point C, then let me know right through the comments on the video page, or you can post on the forums. And any other questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'm always around, so this is CB with my gaming edge. Thanks for